wonderful, 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 beautiful day. It is a Monday, the beginning of the week. And welcome to the show. I have another week of beautiful truth to share with you folks, my brethren. Had a great day yesterday. Ended off the day with fellowship with my brother Leo. He was on vacation, by the way. And he's in Holland. And he's walking and he's enjoying and he can see the trees and everything around him when he's walking with his dogs. It's, it's nice. And to be able to have fellowship with him. I was a little bit distressed yesterday. I don't know why. I think it was because just, you know, when you're spiritual as I am, everything is spiritual. And I cannot avoid it. And when people come down to the world and they just, just talk about the world and all the crap in the world, it doesn't make it easy. To be sharing spiritually, no. This is a work and this is a service in the Lord and it's, it's not easy sometimes. Some days I wake up and I don't wanna do a show, but God graces me to do one for you folks. And this is why I do it. We are awaiting the unveiling. And this is coming from the Concordant Word Studies. I'm going to start that this week. In spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ has revealed himself to us and is present with us. We have already experienced his apocalypse and his perusia. But we eagerly look forward to the day when he will be actually unveiled before our wondering eyes. When we shall enjoy his presence and be with him always. Like all great truths in God's word, this has suffered from human manipulation and our mental disabilities. Some insist that we have no part in his apocalypse that is reserved for Israel alone. The only possible conclusion is that he will not reveal himself to us at all. That can never be. So also they insist that his perusia does not concern us. For it is not in Paul's prison epistles. According to this, we will never enjoy his presence. May it never come to that. Only those who do not wish or expect Christ to reveal himself to them or be present with them have a right to claim that they will not have a part in his apocalypse or a place in his perusia. These terms are filled with meaning and descriptive of a marvelous act and fact which no saint would intelligently th thrust from him. It is only because the precious contents have been e emptied out of them, and the Greek shell has been forcibly confined in the theological debate to a single event that saints have actually gone to such extremes as to claim that there is no apocalypse for body members and no perusia for those in the present administration of God's grace. Are they willing to face the future without a revelation of him and apart from his presence? If not, they, ha they must await an apocalypse and welcome a perusia. That Christ will reveal himself to others, to Israel and to the earth is beyond question. But that does not hinder him from unveiling himself to us at a different time. And if, e if in each case, there is an is the act of revealing why should not the same name apply the apocalypse is not a proper noun in the scriptures limited to one time and place it is not com even confined to christ god's sons and god's righteous judgment will also have an apocalypse paul had already had an apocalypse of the lord and so those who have their allotment with him among the celestials will also have an apocalypse of Christ before he unveils himself to Israel and to the world. In order to aid in ridding our minds of this false notion that there is only one apocalypse of Christ, that to Israel and the earth with which we cannot be associated, let us broaden our minds by considering the word in all its context as it appears in the scriptures. Okay, I'm going to go through this, and then uh, we're going to continue on tomorrow. It's apocaly apocalypses. 
A P O K A L U P I P S I S. Apocalypsis. From covering. Revelation or unveiling. In Luke chapter 2, verse 32. A light for the revelation of nations to lighten. Romans chapter 2, verse 5. Revelation of the just judgment of God. Chapter 8, verse 19. The unveiling of the sons of God. Manifestation. Chapter 16 of Romans, verse 25. The revelation of a secret, hushed in times eonian. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. Awaiting the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ, the coming. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 6. Speaking either in revelation. Verse 26. Each of you has a revelation. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Apparitions and revelations of the Lord. Verse 7, transcendence of the revelations. Galatians chapter 1, verse 12, through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 2, verse 2, I went up in accord with a revelation. Ephesians 1, 17, giving you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Chapter 3, verse 3, the secret is made known to me by revelation. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7. Ease with us at the unveiling of the Lord Jesus Christ. When shall be revealed? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. At the unveiling of Jesus Christ appearing. Verse 13. In the unveiling of Jesus Christ, revelation. Chapter 4 of 1 Peter, verse 13. Exulting in the unveiling of his glory. When shall be revealed? Okay, the actual unveiling, chapter 1, verse 1. The un unveiling of Jesus Christ, revelation. The uncovering of that which has been covered. So that's what revelation or unveiling means. And when he uncovers us himself to us in the air, that's an unveiling right there. An unveiling. The members of the body of Christ at the presence of Christ himself as our head comes down and he calls us to the air that is an unveiling so we will see the unveiling of Jesus Christ and then he will unveil us the sons of God to his universe so there's the display right there and I'm going to continue with that article tomorrow I love you all have a wonderful Monday